Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. Every week the developers take four questions posed by you, the community, and respond to them, posting that dev Q&A to the official Eve Echoes Facebook page, Twitter account, and somewhere deep in the game. I think if you go into your ship's AI system, there is a way to go to the dev Q&A there as well if you want to read it there. But I go through this every week to add my own personal thoughts and opinions. I add a lot of information based on previous dev Q&A on AMAs and just my conversations directly with the developers as well to give some insight into the direction the game may be headed in. I don't always agree with the questions, I don't always agree with the answers, but I like to think this gives a nice insight into where the game could be headed and how it could be improved in this game that we all absolutely love. Now, speaking of opinions, I would love to hear yours in the comment section down below. And remember, every week I give away three months of Combo Omega. Three lucky people each win a month of Combo Omega. One of those is randomly given to someone who commented on one of my YouTube videos in the past week. The other two are given to people who are active in the Catskull Discord. So make sure you head into the description of this video, join that Discord, and get chatting. Anyway, if you do have a question for the developers as well, there is a link in the description of this video to a Google document where you can ask a question. If your question is one that is chosen to be responded to, not only do you get your question answered, not only do you feature in one of my awesome videos, you will also win a month of basic Omega courtesy of the developers. Anyway, with all of that said and done then, let's jump right into this week's developer Q&A, which is for the week of the 25th to the 31st of May. Thanks for the balancing updates recently, says the first question. A crucial part of Echoes is the market, and new players have some problems understanding player-based economies like Eve Echoes has. Could you add more information about the market in the initial tutorial? That would help players learn a lot about peer-to-peer -peer transactions and trading. Now I'm going to let Lance Dot respond first here. Thank you for your support, says Lance Dot. The in-game trading system is one of our favourite features, but it also brings concerns. Its complexity results in a relatively high threshold for use. We've not had a good opportunity to improve its ease of use before, but we are now making attempts to make it more user-friendly. And I can hear some hallelujahs coming from those folks who, on every single post on the Ebeco's Discord, put up the Fix Market UI. Uh, yeah, you know the folks. Anyway, so what they're saying here is basically Basically, the Evacos being a player-driven economy, which it's not completely, but it is player-based, which I like the, the, the terming of the original question here. Um, it's one of the big features of Evacos, but it does have some problems. Ultimately, there's not really much I think you can do in regards to an initial tutorial. Like, correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong here, but how would you do that? Because the, the complexities of a peer-to-peer -peer transaction system is simply that people buy things for what they think it's worth. And this does create some really interesting situations on the market where if you have a look at stuff, you'll find that in certain situations, you've got a C-type module that sells for so much, you've got a Meta Level 8 module that sells for a little bit less, you've got a Meta 6 module like the Republic Fleet and Kaldari Navy that sells for even less, but sometimes the Meta 5 modules sometimes sell for more just because people have looked at the market, seen there's nothing there, and just thumb-sucked a price, which obviously isn't going to sell, because anyone with half a brain cell is going to check the prices around it first and see that, hang on, you want to sell, sell me a Meta 5 module for 2 million, but the Meta 6 module is only 500,000. Eh? Uh? Ultimately, understanding of a peer-to-peer -peer economy is going to come from just how sort of market savvy you are. Like, without going into sort of full-on economics or business studies, I don't get how you would do that in a tutorial. I get that you can make the interface more friendly, I get that you can add better tooltips than that, that explain some of the sort of Eve explicit things, like how the transaction taxes and broker fees, etc. work, um, but beyond that, there's not really much the developers can do in regards to a tutorial experience for this. It just requires people to actually understand market forces, which I've learned from my own comment section. And I don't mean to be rude. I genuinely don't mean to be rude here. This is not a disparaging comment. Most people don't understand basic economics and market forces. It's, I, I don't know if it's, like, we weren't taught it in the UK in school when I grew up in England. Um, economics was something you took as an optional subject at GCSE or same with business studies. You never really covered this kind of stuff in like your day-to-day -day, like school. And I suppose that kind of is the point that 
market forces and economics can often be really quite sort of counterintuitive. You think that, oh, actually, if I want something to be more, you know, more valuable, I need to get more of it. If I want to make more money, I need to gather more of the stuff. No, often actually rarity and scarcity is the, the better thing to drive up prices. But hey, let's not go into a full economics video here. I think if you want to learn about peer-to-peer -peer marketing, um, then it's probably worth picking up something like economics for dummies or like business studies for dummies. One of those sort of like, you know, teach yourself at home books. And there are some probably some really good courses online as well that can help you with that. I'm just not sure how you'd get that into the scope of a mobile game, but hey, there we go. Question two, with the new industry capital module release, like the Sea Lion module, that gives ore compression capabilities, does this need the ore compression skill to use, or is it completely independent and works on its own without the skill? Well, one of your favourite content creators has done some videos recently on the Rock Wall, and I've showcased how the Industrial Enhanced Core and the Industrial Command Core actually work. Um, and as Cloud here says, the Industrial Core is not affected by the original ore compression skill and does not require skills to use, but if the newly added corresponding skill is trained, the Industrial Core will be more efficient. The Rock Wall gets bonuses, basically, from, I think it's capital industrial ship that gives the bonuses to the uh, gives gives bonuses to the industrial cores um, and that will therefore make things more efficient by reducing the fuel requirement for those modules to cycle um, it's the blue one the industrial command core um, compresses ore in your ore hold and in every friendly ore hold within I think it's 45 kilometers is the basic range of that with the skill trained up I think it gets a range bonus from that um, but every ship within range every friendly ship within range that has ore in its or hold will get uh, that compressed as well by the raw call. Ultimately, it does have to be in an ore hold. If you were to put something into a standard hold, it doesn't work. That said, it does mean that you can get someone to fly out with, say, a reef um, or something that's got an ore hold that's full of standard ore, park it next to a raw call, and that raw call will then compress the ore in that ore hold. And yeah, the standard compression skill does not affect it. But the difference here, and something that Yatsuki actually pointed out to me, is that the raw call makes rich ores, whereas the compression skill then... Uh, converts into compressed ores, which are still the better option. So you can't just replace the compression skill with the raw call, um, but it does have its uses there as an alternative way of compressing your ores. Moving on then to question three. Since we're getting mining drones at the new industry update, clearly asked a couple of weeks back, when are we getting the other drones like E-War and Nosferatu or Neutralizer drones? Also would like to have some unique only in Echoes drones like Disruptor and Web drones. Are Webifier drones not a thing in EVE Online? I'm pretty sure Webifier drones are a thing in EVE Online. Like, don't quote me on that, but I'm like 99% certain Webifier drones are a thing in EVE Online. But hey, Cloud says, currently we are developing the salvage drone, but the acquire method and release time have not been determined. E-War drone is currently not in the development plan, and I'm actually all for this, and um, hear me out, hear me out. Now, salvage drones work nicely, because you basically have it work like an auto salvager that takes up the drone slot of the ship that's using it. Now, this means if you're using a brawling battleship or something, instead of having to have your mid slots be taken up by auto salvagers, you could use your drone tube instead to take up the, uh, the salvaging opportunity there. That's kind of cool. It's a bit of a choice, and it does mean that if you're already able to use the auto salvages, like uh, good old Otto Mechanic with his auto salvages on the Rattlesnake, that's awesome because it, it he can still do those. But if you wanted to keep your webifiers, for example, if you're using, say, a Macariel, you could take out the drones and swap those for salvage drones, and that's kind of cool. I like that, because it does mean that you don't have the drones there for when, um, like, you go up against frigates or so on and so forth. Also, it's worth noting the Noctis doesn't have drone tubes, so that's not going to benefit from this directly, but some of the other alternatives might. For example, if you're using um, a Covert Ops Explorer, or a Covert Ops Frig, for example, um, with auto salvages, um, and the drones there, you're going to get, well, okay, not drones on that one either, but hey, it, there, are, there are uses. <laughs> I'm just bad at giving examples, all right? Um, however, things like E-War and uh, Capacitor Warfare drones, yeah, these do have a precedent in EVE Online. However, we have seen a recent push from the developers to have drones not be a thing in PvP. They are trying to reduce how drones work in PvP um, because they are the, ultimately one of the biggest causes of the disconnect and black screen issues. So... 
the last thing you want to do is basically try and remove drones and then go, oh, by the way, here's some new ones that you, everyone's going to want to use. Like right now, right now, if you're in uh, like something like a Tempest Striker um, and you were doing an Alpha Strike build from a distance, your drone tube, you may as well leave it empty for the most part. There's really no point to it in a PvP scenario. However, if you had E-War or Nosferatu and Neutralizer drones or Disruptor and Web drones, suddenly everyone who doesn't really get much use out of drones is going to want to equip them, thus increasing the amount of drones on the battlefield at a time when we're trying to reduce the amount of drones on the battlefield. I'm also just, there's a part of me that thinks that E-War is already fairly prevalent in Echoes. Like, a lot of the E-War is used probably, especially capacitor warfare, probably more than it should be. And I will eventually get around to doing a video on why I think Nosferatus and Neutralizers need to be swapped around a bit and some changes and nerfs need to be made there. To me, it is just, it's too much that it is so you ubiquitous to oversize a neutralizer on any ship. The fact that you can fit a large neutralizer on a tier 6 rupture, which has a very low power grid to begin with, is just insane to me. And if you ask me, if you ask someone, hey, you've got one module which is designed to absolutely flatten your opponent's capacitor, and you've got another one which drains a little bit from them and helps keep your capacitor going, which one do you think is going to be the bigger and harder to fit module? Most people would probably, on a knee-jerk, answer the Neutralizer. But it's not. The Nosferatu is much more power grid than the Neutralizer, and I think that should be swapped around. I can understand oversizing a Nosferatu. I think oversizing Neutralizers is its too much of a thing, and even online new Neutralizers take up a precious high slot, usually a utility high slot, admittedly, but uh, the fact that Echoes, the mid slots, are usually so versatile and viable anyway, and you can oversize them, I don't think we need more capacitor warfare on our drones. I don't think we need it on E-War either. I think it's, I, I would rather see things like the Vigil, the Crucifier, the Griffin, and the uh, the Maulus actually getting proper bonuses. Um, to the E-War there, so that those were useful in these kind of engagements, rather than just forcing drones into more situations. I'm actually on board with Cloud on this one, um, and I wasn't originally, that was something I've been looking, I said before that actually Webify drones could be something really useful, but we, d we don't need it. We don't need it in Echoes, and Webify drones specifically, before we move on to this question, Webify drones specifically is something absolutely I would be against in Echoes. Right now, as a frigate pilot in PvP, it is already pretty tough. Web strength and web range are already entirely too prevalent. People have said, oh, when are we getting stasis grapplers? And it's like, really? You think we need stasis grapplers? When we've got webifiers that already do what they do at the range that they do them, then why on earth do we need stasis grapplers? There's, there's no point. Adding more web capabilities, like crikey, you already see people with like a tornado fitting to, or you know, these brawling with large weapons hitting absolutely fine with two or three webs as it is. Now you want to give those battleships another two webifiers via their drone slots? Really? D that's. Oh. That would be removing the like the purpose of frigates and that in PvP. Imagine if every battleship you came across, you're guaranteed that both of its drones are going to be web drones, and most of its mid slots are going to be web fires as well. Like, what's the point anymore? Anyway, moving on to question number four. With the recent addition of industrial ships, will you consider adding corporation citadels for planetary production? New capital miners will produce more ore relative to PI. The addition of PI-related citadels could stabilize the PI prices. Best regards and thank you for all you do. Ooh, do you honestly think PI prices need stabilizing? PI right now... Hey, it's pretty much the one part of industry that is working as intended. It's supposed to be the gatekeeper. PI is supposed to be the thing that does actually, like, gatekeep and choke. It funnels how your industry is actually going. It's the it's the big, like, roadblock is the point I'm trying to get at here. I'm just throwing out buzzwords now. Um, Lance Dot says there are currently no plans on adding the Citadel. I'm assuming they mean actually a part of a Citadel, like a, a dockable structure. But we are watching the stock of ore and planetary materials. If there's an imbalance in the future, we will further adjust the output of the planetary production. I don't think planetary production is going to be the problem here. For crying out loud, like, we have so many people with corporation Citadels. If you are an industrial, someone flying a capital... Minor, if you're flying a raw call for crying out loud, you probably have an outpost, right? Like, I can't imagine that you sit there and go, oh, I'm flying a raw call, but I'm stuck with my planetary, you know, my PI because, oh no, I just don't have the money to buy an outpost, the outpost that's literally, um, 
less than a tenth of the cost of a, uh, a, a, a of a raw call, um, and you can fit the PI stuff on that. PI to me is it, it's not a, the problem. The problem right now to me is that we are already seeing a crash in the ore market, and that's before the raw calls even properly hit like the public domain. Once we have a lot of raw calls going around, um, and the orcas undocking and things like this, and our fleets are just harvesting more and more and more ore, well. That price is just going to get worse. We are on the cusp of a monumental crash of ore prices. It's nice to see that Lance Dot is watching the stock of ore and planetary materials, but he's going to be watching it plummet. And there's a part of me that genuinely, again, I'm sorry, Lance Dot, you, all the respect, but at the same token, anyone could have told you this was what was going to happen. And the answer of we want to make sure that that is actually what's going to happen before we put safeguards in place is not a bad way to do it. And it's very much the same thing as climate change. Oh, I don't think we should make new jobs for people and make the world a better, cleaner, safer place. No. What if it's all a hoax? How dare, how could, you know, what if it's a hoax? What if climate change is a hoax and we've made the world a better place for nothing? Basically, it's the same theory here that, yeah, ultimately, you, we should be looking to fix the problems before they happen, rather than waiting for the problems to happen and then scrambling for an answer, because by that point, it may just be too late. Who knows? Anyway, that could just be my personal opinion. Sorry for the slightly political rant there, folks, but screw it, it's climate change. If you're at this point in time and still deny that it's a thing, well, <laughs> sorry, you are uneducated. Anyway, on that controversial statement, those were my thoughts and opinions for this week's developer Q&A. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Would love to know what you think about this Q&A, about these questions. I think the one I'm most interested in hearing people's opinions on, actually, if we, oh, cracky, zoom out and scroll through, is probably going to be the one here um, about the different drones. What do you think? Would you like to see disruptor drones and web drones? Would you like to see e-war and not, uh, capacitor warfare drones? Do you think I'm completely off base on that when I say that it would break the game across its knee? Let me know this and more in the comment section down below. Good luck, I'll be deciding this week's three combo Omega winners within the next 24 hours. So it'll be someone from the comment section and two people from my Discord. Good luck luck this week. Hopefully see you all next week for that as well. Otherwise, folks, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!